<clears throat> Hi, everybody. Um, I am Tom Woodford. I'm sitting here with Connor Bullen, who has volunteered to help us out today. We are going to demonstrate how everyone can set up their Common App account. And then we're also going to, I will show you how to select all of your colleges. We will take care of FERPA, which, which we have to do, and I will go over all that. And then most importantly, after we do all that, then we will um, match Common App to school links. That is how we as high school counselors send your high school transcripts. And then I will show Connor how to request letters of recommendation. And this will show you how to do that as well. And so uh, by watching this video, you will be able to take care of all of the technical parts of the application, then you would just have to fill out the application at that point. So the first thing that we're gonna do, Connor, over here on the right, we're gonna create a student account. So Connor is a first year student. Does not matter which email that, that he's gonna use. He can use his school email, he could use his personal email. Either one works. And I encourage you to type it in again. Do not copy and paste it because if there is something spelled wrong, then that will mess up your student account. Then Connor will go to his password. It must have a capital letter, a number, and a symbol and be 10 digits long. Okay. Then Connor will need to scroll down and do that again. Very good. Now what I encourage all of you to do is to go to your phones in your notes, put in the email you used for your common app and your password, okay? All of you are going to be applying as a first year student in 23 or 24, all of you are starting in the fall of 24. You're gonna put in your legal name here, legal first name. All right, you are not gonna put in any, any other name here. You're gonna use your legal name. Connor will put in his last name. Then he will put in his date of birth. Click on the little calendar, choose the year. Very good. And then he's going to put in his phone number, click on that first box, click on US. There you go. You don't, you don't have to put in any dashes, just phone number. Okay, we got a space right there. So back that up, very good. Now he will put in his address. It will show up right here. There you go. Click on that. Click on continue. Very good, then scroll down even further. Answer this first question is no. Check the last box, then create student account. <clears throat> Once you're in, you're in. This is, this is what the Common App is gonna look like. It's made up of these five sections. Over here on the right, financial aid. It gives you all kinds of information about grants, scholarships, it talks about loans, it talks about the free application for federal student aid, otherwise known as FAFSA. We will host our own financial aid meeting on September 27th at Bradley at 6.30. I encourage all seniors and their parents to be there. And so this is just a good little section here to help understand how financial aid works. So one of the first things we have to do, so 
understanding what these other tabs are. The dashboard is once we put in schools, this is where Connor will go and look to see what each school is going to require in this process. My colleges, every school that's on his list will show up here. And this is where they will have their own questions. And this is where Connor will um, review, pay for, and submit each school separately. And then the Common App tab is the heart of this application. It's made up of these six sections. After he is finished with each section, he will get a green check mark. One of the first things we have to do so we can match Common App to School Links is to um, identify your high school. So click on the Education tab, Find School. All right. Connor is a student at Hilliard Davidson. Click on it. Continue. We don't need to do anything else in this section right now. The next thing we will do is to search for our colleges. Connor had talked to me about he wants to apply to the University of Cincinnati. Here it is. We'll click on Add. We will go to My Colleges. Make sure it's there. We can click on it. This is where you find UC's own questions. We're going to add a few other schools. Ohio State. There we go. Go over to My Colleges. They're both there. And I think Appalachian State as well. And I think that's all that we're going to add at this moment. Okay. So all three of the schools he's going to apply to using this own application should be showing up right here. If you're coming to the free application tonight for OU, Bowling Green, or any of those other events that we have, you will not add those schools in here because we will be filling out their own application that night. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to click on one of these schools and where it says recommenders and FERPA, we have to we have to take care of that. When you do it for one school, you are taking care of it for all schools. What is FERPA? FERPA is where you have to give permission for the colleges and universities you have to say it's okay that they can read your personal information that you are putting in your application, and that's also on your high school transcript. So you have to do that here. You can read this if you want, but I just told you, so we'll check the box. We can continue. Check this box. Now, Connor has a choice here. You can do either one. I will give my recommendation, but students can choose either one of these. The first one is I waive my right to review any recommendations and supplemental documents through the Common App, or I do not waive my right, okay? Which means if students would reach out to the Common App and wanna see letters of recommendation, they would go and, and look to see how you answered this. If you answered here, then they won't let you see those. If you answer here, they will. However, I my suggestion is to waive your right. First off, most of our teachers in Hilliard schools will give you a copy of what they are going to write. But at no time should any teacher or high school counselor be writing a letter of recommendation that is being evaluated by student and parent. On the college side, sometimes they wonder why would a student um, uh, not trust what a teacher is going to write for them. So, Connor, I'll let you choose. Either one is fine. That is up to you. All right. And you click I understand. You will put in today's date by just clicking on the calendar and click on the circle. Connor will put in his full name. That is a signature, not first name. All right. Then he will save it and close it. Connor will see he's got his first green check mark here. Okay. Once you finish sections of the application in here, every time you finish it, you will get a green check mark. Okay. When it's time to finish 
every school's got their own questions, then when there's a green check mark here, then he can review his application, pay for his application, and submit each application separately right here. This is where he would go to submitting App State's application. This is where he would go to submit Ohio State's application. All right, you good with that? So now we're going to go over to school links. Now we're at the point where um, Connor had, now needs to match Common App and School Links. So these two systems talk to each other. In School Links, that's how the school counselor will send a transcript. This is where the um, um, teachers will also send letters of recommendation that will attach themselves to the application. So the way that we do this, you go to colleges on the left, scroll down to college applications, and then it will go to this section right here where it says, let's go. First thing we have to do is to put in um, your address. This address must match the address that is inside of the common app as well. There it is. Click on it next. All right, this is where you answer the question, do you qualify for free and reduced lunch? If you do, then you would have earned any kind of eligibility for free ACT, SAT. If not, then you just check none at the bottom, scroll down. Scroll down, check on next. Then we have to do FERPA again, because we have to say it's okay that these two systems talk to each other, okay? So we will answer this the same way we did the last time. Connor will put his signature in here. Very good. Sign the waiver and finish. All right, then we go right here to where it says connect. You can read this if you want, but I'll tell you what to do. Scroll down, click on the link in green. Then you're going to, you put you put in the same email address you use to create your common app and the password. And this is what will link these two systems to each other. Then you have to answer a question that says you approve that this can happen. Right, sign in. If it works well, he has to click on, I agree that these two systems can talk to each other. Then we click on connect. In four seconds, it'll go back to the common app. Uh, School Links has been a little glitchy right here. Um, if it works perfectly, uh, which it did not right here. So is what, what is happening, there's, there's a little delay. It's saying that his FERPA is not done, but we have seen that he has done that. So, you can go back and work on the common app and then come back in 15 minutes or so and then refresh. When all of the schools show up right here in school links, that means you have requested all of your letters of recommendation. Then the way you request teachers, I'm sorry, when all of the colleges are listed here, then he, he has requested all of his transcripts to be sent to those schools. Then to request letters of recommendation, next to each one of those schools is a little pencil. Click on the little pencil, and there's a little plus sign that says teacher evaluation. Click on that. Every teacher in Hilliard City Schools is there. Put in a name, and then that's how you submit that. You have to do that for every teacher, and then that will show up here. And then what happens is, the student's name will show up in that teacher's school links account. So when they write their letter, they will upload it. And then when they submit it, it'll go to all of the colleges that the student has selected them to, to write for. Okay. All right. So in about 20 minutes, 15 minutes or so, all of those colleges will show up right here. So I hope that this was helpful and in getting you set up to, um, um, work on your application. Now it's time to go back to the common app, work on the profile, work on the family section, the education section. I do want to talk about this testing section real quickly. And so 
Every year we have students and parents make this mistake. This is right here. This first question is asking, do you plan to self-report your ACT scores, SAT scores, or your SATs, or your um, AP scores? If you say yes, then you tell them which ones that you want to put in and that kind of thing. But this is just you telling them, having a conversation with these colleges of what your scores are. But if you're applying with test scores, which you will tell each college that inside Common App, under their own questions, one of their own questions will be, do you plan to apply with test scores or not with test scores? If you say yes, then they're expecting to get those test scores. Putting those test scores in this test testing section does not mean that they have your test scores. All test scores must come from the testing agency. So if they're going to apply with ACT scores, they must request scores from the ACT website to be sent to those colleges. Or if Connor's going to use his SAT, which I believe he's going to, then he will want to request that through his college board website to those colleges. Tom Woodford, the high school counselors, Hilliard City Schools in general, cannot send test scores. Only the students or the parents that have access to those student accounts can send them. Every year after the Ohio State deadline of November 1st, I get three to five parents calling me wondering why their, app, their son's application or their child's application is still open to OSU. And it says that they haven't received test scores and they wanna know why we didn't send them. And I have to reinforce that this has been talked about at every meeting that I've hosted in multiple college news emails that, that, that has gone out as well as this video, that Hilliard City Schools cannot send test scores. Parents and students are the only ones that can send those scores. So I hope that this is helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, you feel free to reach out to me, and I would love to help. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye.